Hello YouTube, it is Chris here, and in today's episode we're going to be doing a full test and a review of my brand new Taraba Skrama. So stick with me. Welcome back everybody and thank you for sticking with me. Like I said, today we're going to be doing a full test and review of my Taraba Skrama. If you're joining us for the first time, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our new episodes or our daily giveaways. Additionally, make sure you hit that notification button so you don't miss anything. Also, we have a new round of our Amazon gift card giveaways and to enter, you need to be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. We also pick winners in the very next episode, so if you enter on this particular giveaway, you'll find out who the winner is on the very next episode. As plain and simple as this knife is, this knife is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, channel subscriber Doug actually got this knife for me a while back because he knew I loved big freaking knives. And now that I have this knife, I definitely want to check out more of the line of this company. And I honestly, I can't pronounce it, but I'm going to like type it right there. But they're out of Finland and they are basically a military surplus and tactical shop over in Finland. And they sell the Jakari Pukos, which are kind of a nice bushcrafty knife. And then they have this big, huge, chopping, massive monster. So some of the specs real quick on this blade is it's made of ADCRV2. It is only four millimeters thick, but the good thing about that is still really, really hardy. ADCRV2 is a very, very, very tough steel. And if it's actually heat treated and tempered properly, it ends up being stronger, in my opinion, than 5160. But this particular blade is tempered to a Rockwell of 59, which is pretty freaking hard for the steel but it's definitely gonna mean you're gonna have good edge retention. And after doing a little bit more research, I noticed an interesting little cut right here on the grind, right here near the Ricasso. And that was actually done on purpose. I actually thought that was an accident of the company, like something they did in the grinding process, but I found out that they actually ground that down at a 25 degree angle for finer detail work when you were actually trying to do things like feather sticking, and other finer detail works so when you're really getting in solid on this blade. But then when you're trying to do heavier chopping tasks, this is actually ground in at a 34 degree angle. So you have a real, more robust edge. And as you guys can tell by seeing it in my hand, this is a massive freaking blade. It is about 18 and a half ounces, which is just over a pound. It's not super heavy, but it's almost 17 inches long with a nine and a half inch blade, which is a big knife. This knife is no stranger to YouTube. It's been showcased a lot of different places, but I think something that is kind of underrated about this knife is it's extremely well made. It's a very high quality tool. It ain't pretty, but it definitely gets the job done. But the biggest selling point for me is this is a $58 knife. Now I know you can get a leather sheath and everything for it, and it can go up to about 84 bucks, which is still a steal, but if you get the plain Jane version, because more than likely you're going to want to get your own custom sheath for it's $58. It's super cheap. And speaking of sheaths, we want to give some credit to this awesome sheath that was made for our Scrama by our buddy Chad over at the Survival Smith. And we're definitely going to drop his link down in the video description to you can contact him if you want a sheath made. But he made us a pretty basic yet pretty wicked freaking sheath. It is a taco pattern style kydex sheath with the basket weave kydex. It's probably one of my new favorite patterns. Um, I think it's also known as tank tracks, but I think officially on the thermoplastics websites and stuff like that, it is called basket weave. And this is actually the SE survival kit nylon pouch, but we went ahead and built our own little custom survival kit inside of here. And basically most of the items that are here come from Wazoo survival gear in their cash belt survival kits. They have these little EDC and adventure packs that are like between 30 to 50 bucks. And it's a full on like 15 to 22 piece survival kit. And we went ahead and stuck the entire 22 piece kit in here. And as you see, it gives you a little bit of everything you need. You have a Japanese full compass. I've got a fishing kit in here, some snare wire, some zip ties, some fire starting stuff. It's pretty cool. Nice little comprehensive kit. I decided to stick in there for fun. And if you want to check out any awesome American made pocket survival kit style stuff and wearable survivor gear, definitely go check out the Wazoo survival gear link down in the video description. They've got some freaking wicked stuff. And then he made us a half inch thick ferro rod holster for my four directions bushcraft ferro rod elite. 
because that those are literally my favorite fair rods on the planet because you get such a long stroke on the draw where you can basically get away with only doing one to three strokes when you're lighting a fire and trying to catch tinder on fire you're good to go in a campsite and as we're discussing some of the tasks we put this through you can see there's a little bit of damage that happened to this because uh well we were beating this thing up this is designed to be kind of the all-around super tool so we wanted to make sure this thing had merits for its 60 bucks because we love the knife, but we wanted to really see what it could do. And for those of you who live in Texas or have been to Texas, you know the wood we got here is just a little bit, you know, more robust than some of the Nancy Fancy woods you guys have in the Midwest. And all jokes aside, yes, our wood is basically drought resistant, a lot of the plants we have here, and that's why some of our wood is tougher. It's not necessarily we have these super trees anywhere, they've just kind of micro evolved because they have to be drought resistant. So a lot of the live oaks and mesquite wood and all that stuff is much harder and much tougher to get through. So when we're actually testing blades here, when we're doing batoning and chopping, and it almost seems like most of the tools that we use aren't performing nearly as well. But I can tell you, if you see a knife or a tool perform well here in Texas, you know it's a good dang tool because the medium it has to go through is pretty dang tough. Firstly, we wanted to do some batoning, but we needed a baton! So I went ahead and grabbed a spare piece of live oak and we actually created our own little makeshift hobo baton. I know this looks ugly, but it works. It fits on my hand nice and heavy, short. It'll get the job done. It did really, really well. So we actually made our own baton out in the woods and then we used that to actually process the rest of our wood and do our batoning and chopping and everything like that. And all of the tasks that we ended up putting this knife through did a freaking amazing job. It is a absolute chopping monster. This thing is such a beast. And like I said, it's ugly, but you don't have to have a pretty knife to work. Like the primitive bush tool from freaking Matt Graham. I think that's one of the ugliest knives on the planet. No offense, Matt Graham. I just think the knife is ugly, but that knife works really, really well. So it's a testament that a knife doesn't have to be gorgeous and sexy and pretty to work really, really well. And with that said, considering the price point of this blade at $58, the fact you can use this to strike a fire and a ferro rod, you can process tinder with the very, very sharp 90 degree spine on the back end of that. You're gonna have no issues there. You have a really nice scandy kind of saber grind going on with this thing. It definitely lends itself to chopping. It had no issues doing any finer tasks, larger tasks, chopping, scraping, batoning, wedge. I mean, everything we wanted this thing to do, it did, and it did it very well. And if you're wondering what that tinder was that we were using, it is this stuff right here. It is wax impregnated fat wood that is man-made, but it is completely 100% waterproof and it has an indefinite shelf life. For me, some of the benefits it has over things like natural fat wood, in my opinion, are the fact that it creates a, its own gasification once you light it on fire. And that makes it more wind and water resistant once it's actually lit. So it allows it to kind of retain a lot more heat. So while you're trying to build your fire initially in your campsite, you're good to go. And then finally, it really doesn't take a whole lot of this stuff to actually create a single fire. I think we've made like 30 fires off of this and you can see there's a buttload of this left. It's definitely gonna be one little block of this would last like hundreds and hundreds of fires. But on top of that, this stuff is buttery freaking soft. And I'll actually show that to you right now. I mean, this stuff takes absolutely no effort to scrape even just a little bit of this stuff off. It comes right off like it's like literally coming from a stick of butter. The winner of yesterday's Amazon gift card giveaway is Sue Nelson. Sue Nelson, congratulations, you are the winner. So definitely contact me on the back end of my channel so we can get your contact details. We don't need this video to take too long because, well, we like the knife and it worked really, really well. And as you guys see in the footage that we did with it, I mean, it, ugh, dude, this knife is awesome. And I keep the fact in the price point that it's 60 freaking dollars. Now, is this knife the scrama for absolutely everybody? Well, I certainly think so, but it may not be, and that's okay. There are other tools and knives out there that are absolutely freaking amazing, but for the price point, this actually comes up there and swings with the big boys. And it really doesn't matter. I mean, you may be a, a K-Bar person, a Condor, a Matt Graham lover, maybe love Bark Rivers. It really, I mean, it doesn't really matter the price range you put yourself into or the brands you love. And if you like any alternative brands and you want or are interested in any other big recommendations, I'll definitely drop a few videos and links down in the video description so you can see some of our other recommended blades. But all in all, like I said, the horsepower, that this freaking thing kicks out for the overall weight, size, and price point. I mean, it's, it's awesome. And because of this performance and how well this thing worked out in the field, it definitely has me interested in being able to check out the 110 and 140 Jakari Pucos by this company because if I see that this knife is performing well, I can only imagine 
how awesome those as everyday carry woods companion knives would be. But that is about as a round. And if you enjoy the full test and review of the Tarava Scrama, definitely throw this video a big thumbs up and share this out with your friends and family in your social media networks so we can keep growing, thriving, and making awesome videos for you guys. But that is about us for now. Hope you guys have an absolute wonderful day. I'm out. <laughs>